how far would you go for attention? Would you run for president even though you're clearly incompetent? Would you start a YouTube show and beg for people to like you? Hashtag too real! Would you write, produce, direct and star in a movie so bad that for decades no one will let you live it down? Well, it's award season in Hollywood. And everyone's talking about one thing. Comedian Aziz Ansari is pushing back against allegations of sexual misconduct. Louis C.K. is the latest celebrity to face allegations of sexual abuse. Kevin Spacey in a drama of his own. Jeremy well, Piven also defending himself. Movie. Okay, so two things. Here's what happened at the Golden Globes when James Franco won Best Actor for his role in The Disaster Artist. First person I have to thank is the man himself, Tommy Wiseau. Come on up here, Tommy. <laughs> Did you see that? Franco just bought on the inspiration for the role that just won him a Golden Globe and then stopped him from saying anything on stage. It was awkward and hilarious and wait, who, who is that guy? And why is he so, so that? Well, that, my friends, is none other than writer, producer, director, and actor... Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Tommy Wiseau is one of the internet's favorite people. Back in 2003, he made a movie so bad that it became a cult sensation. In fact, The Room has gained a reputation for being the best, worst movie of all time. To this day, there are cinemas that screen the movie year round to sell out audiences. Some of them attended by Tommy himself. And now, interest in the film has reignited after James Franco made a movie about the making of the movie. So I watched the original film, the whole thing. Oh, one hour and 39 minutes of it. And it was amazing! In a really, really, really unbelievably bad way. But how could a film so bad be so good? And why is this weird, eccentric, super creepy, and super amateur filmmaker so globally adored? And what can that teach us about the state of our world right now? This is Buzz. Let's go. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Okay, so we wrote this whole episode and got real excited about going to see The Disaster Artist, and then this happened. Fresh off winning a Best Actor Golden Globe, get this, James Franco is being called out for inappropriate sexual behavior? So out of respect for the women who are accusing James Franco and the seriousness of the allegations, we're not gonna talk about his film at all. Instead, we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of other things, starting with... The Room, not Room, The Room. Very different. Don't get me wrong, this movie is awful. Like a total train wreck. It's about this hardworking, run of the mill guy called Johnny, who seems to be doing everything right in his life. He takes it an orphan off the street, he's loved by his neighborhood, and yet his soon to be wife and love of his life is cheating on him with his best friend, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. I'm so happy I have you as my best friend. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Love triangle, romantic drama, classic Hollywood. And yet, and yet, nothing about this movie makes sense. Not the dialogue, the acting, the casting choices, nor the direction. There's scenes in there that are never explained. One actor is replaced halfway through the film, and there's three sex scenes in the first 20 minutes. And everything is dubbed over badly. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, Doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. Here's what the greatest minds of our time, online movie critics, had to say about the film. Tommy Wiseau's misguided masterpiece subverts the rules of filmmaking with a boundless enthusiasm that renders such mundanities as acting, screenwriting, and cinematography utterly irrelevant. What puts the room in a class of its own is its overabundant idiocy. While you're still gasping at one of the film's moronic lines or vagrant plot knots, another one rises up to smack you in the head. If you're wondering, yes, this accent gets worse. It is a movie so bad, so inept, so unbelievably painful, it's almost impossible to comprehend why anyone thought it would be great on screen. Jeez, guys, tell us how you really feel. Tom Bissell helped write a book on the film, The Disaster Artist, which was the main influence for James Franco's adaptation. He saw the movie over a hundred times, and described it in possibly the best way. It is like a movie made by an alien 
who has never seen a movie, but has had movies thoroughly explained to him. And this is what makes the movie so damn captivating. It's because it's so bad that you just can't look away. All of its shortcomings make it really, really unintentionally funny. You couldn't make this movie if you tried. James Franco, who stars in The Disaster Artist and is also accused by multiple women of sexual harassment, makes a really good point about why this movie is so enjoyable to watch. The room is very watchable. Like, it's badness is so bad. You just want to keep watching. It's unbelievable. It's like yeah. watching a but I think it's more two hour that. train wreck. <laughs> it's like, it is, ooh. but like, with heart. But what is even more intriguing than the movie itself is the man who made it all happen. Chip, 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 chip. Who is Tommy Wiseau? What does he want? Well, he's even more of an enigma. Get this Tommy claims he's from New Orleans, even though he's clearly Eastern European. He says he was 20 years old when he made the room. Yeah, this guy. 20. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Also, no one quite knows where he got the $5 million from to make the film. Oh yes, this movie was made with $5 million. We got a new client at the bank. We'll make a lot of money. What client? I cannot tell you, it's confidential. Oh, come on, why not? No, I can't. Anyway, how is your sex life? <coughs> Perhaps the greatest thing about Tommy Wiseau is that while any sane human being would just fade into obscurity once their life's passion project is mocked relentlessly on the internet, he doesn't do that. He does the opposite. He spends his time touring with the film around the world, showing up at random screenings and watching people laugh uncontrollably at the serious drama he invested so much of his life into. In a weird and wonderful twist of fate, and despite the seemingly impossible, this film has become a resounding success. Everything that would normally end the career of any amateur filmmaker and send them fleeing into hiding has instead added to the legend of this one man. The absolute lack of self-awareness, talent and charisma, his inability to string together even one proper sentence in English. His haunting, unearthly face with those cold, cold dead eyes. All of it seems to draw in more and more people to him and the monstrosity he's created. And you know what? Doesn't that remind you of a certain someone? I'll let Tommy give you a hint. My fellow Americans, hello, I am the president of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, Tommy Wiseau is Donald Trump. Or should I say, Donald Trump is the real disaster artist. We have a disaster. 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 It's been a year now since he was elected. And not one day, not one day, has gone by without him being in the news. Trump insists he's not a racist after shithole country's remark. Trump presses a red button on his desk and a butler brings him coke. Trump claims Obama had his phones wiretapped. No proof cited. Trump's presidency has accelerated the decline of democracy. President of Russia defends incoming US president from rumor he paid prostitutes to pee on each other. Oh, you guys forgot about that one? Trump's first year in office has felt like watching a car crash in slow motion. If you were inside the car, and also the car was on fire. This is fine. He's provoked a nuclear standoff with North Korea via Twitter, sabotaged peace talks between Israelis and Palestinians. He's cracked down on immigrants, Muslims, the transgender community, fired the head of the FBI for investigating his time to Russia, he has the lowest approval rating of any US president in his first year in office. And that's like 1% of the things he's done. Oh, are you happy you voted for me? You are so lucky that I gave you that privilege. Guys, we're living in the darkest timeline. And the worst part of it all is, there is no way to escape him. He's everywhere. If you turn on the news, he's there. If you go on Facebook or Twitter, all of your friends are raging about it. I was watching The Little Rascals the other day with my family, trying to unwind and return to 1994 where everything was simpler. And then... Hi Dad, it's me. I can't escape him. I can't even stop talking about him. And that's the really scary thing about Trump. Instead of crashing and burning like so many people thought he would, realizing he's not fit for president and just fading away into obscurity, he's brought us all into his world. The United States of Trump land. The show where everything is made up and the points don't matter. Now all of our lives seem to revolve around him like a bright orange sun floating endlessly into nothingness and dragging all of us along with it. Hashtag too real. Everything that should make Trump fail seems to have backfired. He's an enigma. There isn't anybody else on earth that people are so fascinated by. Except. I did not say it. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not say shithole countries. I did not. Good or bad or terrifying or really annoying, Trump is great entertainment value. 
and he knows it. And the worst part is we can't look away. In Michael Wolff's book, Fire and Fury, which looks into the inner workings of the White House, we learned that slowly and surely, everyone surrounding Trump, from his family to his staff, eventually starts thinking and acting like him, paranoid and delusional. I'm starting to feel like that too. You are tearing me apart, Donald. And I'm not the only one. Since Trump took office, everyone seems to be in a constant state of rage. CNN goes to breaking news every time anyone in the White House sneezes. This is CNN Breaking News. Stephen Colbert is about to have an aneurysm from how much he hates Trump. You have more people marching against you than cancer. You talk like a sign language gorilla who got hit in the head. The only thing smaller than your hands is your tax return. But maybe we've all been looking at this the wrong way. What if we come to see Donald Trump's presidency like we see the room? What puts Donald Trump in a class of his own is his overabundant idiocy. While you're still gasping at one of the president's moronic lines or vagrant plot knots, another one rises up to smack you in the head. He is the president so bad, so inept, so unbelievably painful, it's almost impossible to comprehend why anyone thought he would be great in the White House. We've got another three years of this guy. Ya Allah, please let there not be a second term. And we're running ourselves into the ground trying to explain his endless antics. But what if we don't? Trump's greatest trick is that he constantly wants to be in the spotlight. The more we rage at him, the more we make fun of him, the more we talk about him day in and day out, the more powerful he gets. And like Tommy Wiseau, Maybe that's exactly what he wants. Maybe that's what he's always wanted. Whoa. Slowly and surely, everyone surrounding. Oh. Yeah, Haggard Trump. Like, what's going on, man? Like, I think he's watching us. There we go. Can't work like this. It doesn't make any sense. Like there's, they're like sitting on a bicycle, but there's no bicycle. But they both look very cool. It's a very hipster t-shirt. I'm very happy with my uh, purchasing decisions. Really brings out my uh, my inner self.